Hello there, Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really well. Hope you're having a great day. I feel pretty well qualified to talk about this topic right now because I've put something like 700 hours worth of streaming seven months into Streamlabs OBS and around about the same also using OBS Studio. Not only that, but I've also made more than 100 videos all about OBS Studio and Streamlabs. So I feel damn well qualified to talk about the differences between the two, which are better, and also the nuances of why you would choose one over the other. Why would you choose Streamlabs OBS to stream on? And why would you use OBS Studio? If you're a new streamer in particular, it could save you a lot of time in not having to transfer over all of your scenes at a later stage to just get the decision right up front. So in the video, we are going to be discussing which is best, Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio. But I'm going to be making that very specific to you and your needs as the streamer. We're going to be discussing some stuff about popularity of OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS because I've done numerous polls which I'll share the results of in this video. The results will probably surprise you of those polls. Actually, I was surprised at them anyway. We're going to talk about some of the differences between the software in a fundamental term, but also in terms of stability and performance. I'm going to be dispelling two pretty major myths about Streamlabs OBS and OBS Studio. There seems to be this like kind of recurring rhetoric about the softwares, both of them. They're pretty wrong, actually. I'm going to be going through the main reasons why you would use one or the other. And ultimately, I'm going to be boiling this video down to three key questions that you need to ask yourself before you make the decision on whether you use Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio. We've got a lot to fit in the video, but I've been meaning to do this video for so long, but I did want to wait until I'd got a lot of time in OBS Studio, which I switched over to in January of 2020. We're now in September, so I've done sort of eight or nine months of that. So I feel like I'm now credible enough to give this video justice. If you find it useful and if you want to help me out, please like the video. I'd appreciate it a lot. You can also subscribe if you want to. Let's do this. So first of all, the polls that I told you about that I've canvassed to my community. I've done this via a few different methods, but primarily through YouTube, but I'll go into the detail of how. I asked on the community page, should I do more videos about? And I listed five different things. And although I didn't add Streamlabs OBS on that list, I was surprised at just how much people want to see more OBS Studio content as opposed to all the other content that I do do on the channel. But I then separately asked, which do you use? Do you use OBS Studio or do you use Streamlabs OBS? And the results were 50. 52% of you said that you use Streamlabs OBS, 38% of you said that you use OBS Studio, and 9% said that you use something else. Which is weird, because that only adds up to 99%. What? YouTube, sort yourself out. <laughs> I did specifically ask people to comment why they use the software that they use. So I'll throw up on screen exactly what people said there. If you want to take a little look at the reasons why people use X or Y here. It doesn't surprise me that more people use Streamlabs OBS because they're a pretty big company. They were acquired by Logitech in like a few years ago for 84 million pounds. Streamlabs obviously make their money through Prime and some other ways like that. They don't actually directly make money through the software. They offer it for free, but they only really do that because they have to because they they charge for it, people would not pay for it and just move to OBS Studio anyway. What this means is Streamlabs is really, really good at acquiring users, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're good at retaining users. So Streamlabs OBS, you'll see a lot of newer viewers will pick it up because they come in through the marketing efforts of Streamlabs, whereas OBS Studio is an open source software that doesn't have a company running it and doesn't have a marketing budget the way that Streamlabs OBS would. So OBS Studio isn't targeting itself as much to the new users. It's sort of relying on the natural traction and word of mouth and also the developments of its developer community. And that's why as a trend, you generally see that a lot of people will come in as an entry level to Streamlabs OBS and frequently might move over to OBS Studio. Just taking a quick look at Google Trends here between OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS. All this does is show on a ratio of zero to 100, 100 being 100% of the popularity for a given search term, how popular something is over time. We've got here the current year from January 20. 2021 and we can see that they kind of dip up and down up and above and below of each other OBS studio in blue took a period here where it was really really popular but has since kind of declined a little bit and they're about on an even keel in terms of their general popularity and also against each other as we go back to March and April in 2020 so last year as the pandemic started we can see that that was the most popular time for OBS studio but it's also super popular for Streamlabs OBS as well so let's just briefly talk about the actual differences between the software fundamentally they do the same thing 
streaming. They broadcast to a streaming platform. You can input your stream key, add sources, add scenes, add audio, all kinds of browser sources, things like that. But because of the way that they are developed, that changes what you can actually do with one versus the other. Logitech and Streamlabs owns Streamlabs OBS. That means they get to decide exactly what happens with that software. Many people don't know this, but Streamlabs OBS is a fork of OBS Studio software. All that really means is that it's kind of like a reskin of OBS Studio, but they limit some of the functionalities. And of course, they add some of their own new functionalities as well. Now, there is a little bit of a misconception with the software forking here. A lot of people say that functionality will come to OBS Studio and then it will move to Streamlabs OBS, but that isn't the case. There are different functionalities that you can have on Streamlabs OBS versus OBS Studio. They're completely independent of each other, and that's because they literally forked away from each other. But the thing is, when one platform does something new, often the other platform will be developed in a way that allows it to compete. So you'll see that they run parallel in terms of some of the functionality that they offer. Now, OBS Studio is open source. That means any old Joe Bloggs nerd in his basement can just start coding plugins for OBS Studio, release them, and whether they're good, bad, whether they're broken or fixed or whatever, they're available for people to install on OBS Studio, come what may. And that means you get a lot of really brilliant plugins that are available on OBS Studio that are simply not available on Streamlabs OBS. And at its core, I would say that the plugins of OBS Studio are the strength of it. But it's also, in a way, the weakness as well. If developers lose interest in their plugin, they don't keep it up to date, it can make that plugin redundant, tax the system even more so than it might otherwise have been, or it can cause bugs and crashes and things like that. So although it's generally a strength, it's not always the case that the plugins are a strength. Streamlabs OBS will have a dedicated team of people that are continuously being paid cash monies to develop that platform. So Streamlabs OBS broadcasting software will continuously be getting developed by Streamlabs, and that will be people's 100% focus day in, day out. And it's likely there's a pretty big team of people on that, somewhere between 20 to 30 people at least developing that software full time. Probably the most striking difference between the two pieces of software, and of course that's before you look at the plugin stuff that I mentioned a second ago, the usability and the look and the feel of Streamlabs OBS is obviously a lot nicer than OBS Studio. OBS Studio just doesn't look nice. And that's because Streamlabs OBS have basically made an effort to make it look friendly for new streamers. Streamlabs are directly targeting their marketing spend at new streamers, and that's not a bad thing to do. So they want their software to look and feel very friendly and easy to use and easy to set up. But to be honest, fundamentally, both OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS are incredibly easy to download, install, and set up. So there's virtually no difference between the setup process and the download process, even if one looks a little bit better than the other. One of the major differences that you used to see was that on OBS Studio, you couldn't control Z on your keyboard to undo if you'd mess up when you're adding sources and scenes and things like that. Streamlabs OBS have had the function for control Z and undoing for a long, long time. But as of about two or three months ago, OBS Studio did add that control Z function. So now there's parity in terms of that as well. Now, because Streamlabs monetize through things like their overlays and Streamlabs Prime and widgets and all of that kind of stuff, there's another misconception that Streamlabs is only usable with its widgets and people only use it for its widgets. The thing is, every single one of their widgets are usable as a browser source on OBS Studio or any other streaming platform such as XSplit or OBS.Live. So it's not really fair to say that Streamlabs OBS is great because you've got all of these widgets because you can use those widgets and often they're free widgets anyway on OBS Studio or any other broadcasting software. And I will admit the fact that the widgets are also actually integrated into the software and not just being used as a browser source through a URL is actually quite a strong point of Streamlabs OBS. You don't have to navigate over to a different web page to configure things. You can configure it all within Streamlabs OBS, the software. But the thing is, a lot of people still do configure the widgets on Streamlabs Online anyway. So you could argue that it's kind of redundant to have them integrated into the software when you can have them as a browser source anyway. Now, I said that I would dispel some myths about Streamlabs OBS and OBS Studio. There's a misconception that Streamlabs OBS is easier to use. Virtually all of the menus in Streamlabs OBS and OBS Studio are identical. It's purely just like a skin on Streamlabs OBS that makes it look a little bit nicer. And now that you've got the Control Z function, that adds to the ease of use of OBS Studio. So it's not really a fair comment to say Streamlabs OBS is just easier to use. It just looks like it's easier to use because the skin on it is nicer. Under the bonnet and the menus and all the functions are virtually the same in Streamlabs OBS as with OBS Studio. The second myth I'm going to dispel is actually in Streamlabs' favor. For a long, long time, people were complaining that the performance of Streamlabs OBS is really, really bad. And although
although out of the box, when you launch OBS Studio and when you launch Streamlabs OBS, Streamlabs OBS will tax your CPU more than OBS Studio. More than likely, over time, you're going to be installing plugins for OBS Studio. Otherwise, what's the point in even using OBS Studio? And each time you add new plugins to OBS Studio, that's adding more CPU load to OBS Studio. And actually, if you add too many or if you add really, really bad plugins to OBS Studio, the CPU performance can be way worse on OBS Studio versus Streamlabs OBS. So I don't really think it's fair to say that Streamlabs OBS takes more performance or uses more PC resources because the likelihood is you're going to be using plugins which will increase the resource utilization of PC anyway if you're using OBS Studio. If you're planning on keeping your streams incredibly simple and you want just the basic things like a game screen, a microphone capture and perhaps a little bit of music, I know from experience that OBS Studio will perform better if you're not installing lots of plugins. So the discussion shouldn't really circle around performance because the performance is a relative parity to each other. Now one thing that really is nice about Streamlabs OBS is the integrated labels function. You can add here through the integrated widgets on the right hand side here, stream labels, and this allows you to add all kinds of different sources here. For example, your top donor, session top donor, monthly top donor, and all these kind of things. But the thing is, if you actually look at it, Streamlabs also have a downloadable version of that exact same labels engine that places text files of all those different things. So although this involves a small installation of the Streamlabs engine, you can still get all of the labels from Streamlabs for free as text files here. And look, there's literally loads of different things you can do here. Most recent subscriber, session most recent subscriber. There's literally 147 different options through the Streamlabs engine. So although it's nice and easy for the labels to be integrated as a widget within Streamlabs OBS, there's a very easy workaround to labels. So you probably don't want to be making your decision on whether you stream on OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS based on the labels. That being said, the different kit and widgets and overlays and stuff that you do use will make a difference to your decision here. If everything that you do is housed within Streamlabs, it's probably going to be easier for you, especially when you first start out, to use Streamlabs OBS. For example, if you're using Streamlabs OBS donation goals, if you're using their label engine, if you're using CloudBot, which by the way is also portable to OBS Studio, so all these things are portable. But if you have got them all housed on Streamlabs OBS, it probably makes sense to use Streamlabs OBS, assuming that you don't want to use a vast array of plugins that are available on OBS Studio. There are a list of things that are going to be extremely difficult to implement on Streamlabs OBS versus OBS Studio. For example, Touchboard and Leoran Board are notoriously either not integrated or badly integrated into Streamlabs OBS, but work very well with OBS Studio. But Touch Portal and Leoran Board are probably a lot more complicated things that at least when you start streaming, you're probably not going to be doing right away. And if you've got a Stream Deck, Stream Deck is definitely agnostic. There's an integration for both Streamlabs OBS and OBS Studio for the Stream Deck. Installing overlays on Streamlabs OBS is a little bit easier, but we're only talking the difference between a couple of minutes. And again, once your overlays are there, you may use them for quite a few months, maybe even like six or 12 months. So we're not talking about a big amount of time here. And learning these things only takes literally a couple of minutes. One thing you can also do, and I've got a video for this, is you can install some overlays on Streamlabs and then quickly port it over to OBS Studio. This isn't a difficult thing to do. So if you like the ability to shop around on the Streamlabs overlays shop, perhaps you've still got a Streamlabs Prime membership that you want to make use of. All you do is simply install it on Streamlabs OBS and literally export it over to OBS Studio. So again, not really a reason to use one or the other. Now let's talk about alerts for a second. If you're using stream alerts from Streamlabs, then it does integrate very well through a pre-installed integration to Streamlabs OBS. And you can make those changes to your alerts within Alertbox within Streamlabs OBS. But the thing is, making the changes on the browser is also very, very easy. So I do actually still use Alertbox from Streamlabs on my OBS Studio broadcast software. But even when I was using Streamlabs OBS, I still configured all of Alertbox through the browser rather than through Streamlabs OBS. And day to day, you're not going to be making many changes to Alertbox. So again, not really a reason why you would choose to stream on Streamlabs OBS just for the Alertbox, which is transferable anyway. There is one really unique reason why you would use OBS Studio over Streamlabs OBS, and that is if you want to do really wacky, automated, random things on your stream, if not now, in the future, then you cannot do certain things on Streamlabs OBS versus OBS Studio. And one of those really simple things is adding a blur to something. You cannot add a blur through filters and a widget source to Streamlabs OBS sources, but you can to OBS Studio, and that's only one of many, many different examples. And then if you want integrations 
with Lior on board if you want touch portal integration, if you want integration with channel points so that the channel points can do wacky things on your stream, highly customizable spectralizers and audio visualizers, which I've done videos on as well. Check these out above there. These are all plugins that are available for OBS Studio. You simply cannot get those plugins for Streamlabs OBS. The range of functions really narrowed down to whatever the developers at Streamlabs allow you. Now, there is something good about that. That does actually mean, believe it or not, and again, this is probably one of those myths to dispel, Streamlabs OBS is way more stable than OBS Studio is. OBS Studio is susceptible to crashes, and normally when that starts to happen, it's a sign that one of the plugins that you've installed is either out of date or a bad plugin. With Streamlabs OBS, you simply don't get that issue. The software is generally pretty damn stable, and that's because they've got a big team of people that will be testing and developing Streamlabs OBS all of the time. So I've figured out that ultimately you can boil down your decision to stream on Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio to three key components and three key questions. The first one is to do with confidence in streaming and how new you are. If you're very new to streaming, if you're not very confident with the streaming software, then chances are that you're going to be much better off on Streamlabs OBS because it's all there in front of you. They make it incredibly easy and they do have people in their Discord that will help you with that. There's a lot of support with Streamlabs OBS. There's a lot of content out there. I've got loads of content on Streamlabs OBS and OBS Studio. The friendly usability and the integrated widgets is very nice. And then when you pair it with the online stuff like Cloudbot and the overlays and the alert box, it's quite a powerful proposition to new streamers. And I would recommend that if you're not very confident technically, then you should go with Streamlabs OBS. Decision number two and component number two is to do with complexity. If you can see that long term, you're probably going to need and want and thirst for really complicated plugins and processes and interactions on your stream, complicated scenes and sources and things like that, you simply will not be able to get that complexity complexity from Streamlabs OBS. If you know that you're going to want that, then you may be better off skipping Streamlabs OBS and going straight to OBS Studio. Ultimately, that was the reason that I moved over to OBS Studio because I wanted to do way more complicated things on my stream. So in a way, I've tried to sort of future-proof myself by using OBS Studio rather than Streamlabs OBS. The final and third wild card that really is quite important for you to decide is, is how strong is your PC? If right off the bat, you've got a very, very weak PC, and I'm talking like barely able to stream, I would recommend downloading and installing OBS Studio and not getting any plugins at all, keeping it as simple as possible, and that's going to reduce the load on your PC to the absolute minimum. The moment you start adding plugins to that, though, you may run into problems, and actually, you may have been better off being with Streamlabs OBS, so you just need to be careful about that. Now, chances are you've probably got a combination of things there. You may want to do complicated things and have a powerful PC, but maybe you're not so confident with software, in which case, you probably would go with OBS Studio and just go through the pain barrier of learning. So there you go, a pretty full video all about whether you should use Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio, which is best for you. Hopefully you come away from this video really quite sure about which of the two broadcasting softwares you want to use. Don't forget to hit like, don't forget to subscribe, and have a nice day.